So I would like to revisit this um, work function where I've got this um, force field and I'm running around getting the work from it. Uh, so this is the same one that I used with Stokes' theorem uh, very recently and you can look that up. I'll try to remember to put a link on it when I can find it. Um, this particular function had, has something going on like this. So it's got a sort of positive def definite um, force in the y direction where the y, the y direction has a zero force here at y equals b, right? And then it has a, uh, but otherwise it's always pointing upwards. And um, then it points in the x direction, it points in the opposite, opposite direction of y. So if it's minus y, it's plus x. So the force is pointing this way, right? Um, well, it's pointing that way in the x direction, right? So it's pointing this way, it'll point the opposite direction above here. So along this line, for example, the force is always going this way, right? And um, up above it, you know, it's starting to move up a little bit. And again, over, over, over here at uh, zero, it's all up directly upwards, right? So it's up, 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 down here at zero. And then um, it's reversed over this way, right? And the Y component just keeps getting bigger as you get smaller, right? So that's sort of w what this thing looks like. So along any Y uh, place, it's more or less the same. Um, so let's see, and it gets narrower over here and stuff like that. So that's what this this thing sort of looks like. And I want to look at this force field. I want to take a um, path around it. Actually, I want to start. Let's start not quite on one of those things. I want to start at minus a over 2 and do a rectangle around like this. So I want to come this way, right? Counterclockwise and come back up to B directly and make this square. Again, this is sort of the kind of thing that you do in thermodynamics and in uh, magnetism and things like that when you're dealing with um, hysteresis and magnetism while you're, when you're dealing with, um, more importantly, when you're dealing with uh, paths in, uh, in different things in um, thermodynamics to find out how much work you're actually doing. Um, so you're losing energy because of, and basically you're going to lose energy proportional to the size of this, this thing here in those in those circumstances. In this circumstance, it also has to do with this function here. So we're going to deal with that function, and we're just going to try to find that function here. Now, before I did it both both ways by two ways by going along this um, circle here and just following the definition of work, right? So remember, the definition of work is W equals um, the integral over some closed path of the force times um, the path length, right? Times the path. Uh, so last time I did it both by using that definition of work and by using Green's theorem. Uh, Green's theorem really only works for uh, two dimensions. So I'm going to look at, or at least the Green's Theorem in your book does. Uh, they might have a, another version somewhere that I don't know about. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to show you a, show you something that works all the time for three dimensions, and only works for three dimensions. Even though this is a pseudo two-dimensional problem, it's going to give us a, a value uh, in the um, Z component, right? Um, so, you, you only do this in, um, in three dimensions with Stokes' Theorem. So we're going to use Stokes' theorem, right? And Stokes' theorem, I hope, is something like this, right? Where you say, okay, I've got this uh, vector function that I'm integrating along some path, and that's equal to some closed path, and that's equal to the, um, the integral of the curl 
of that function uh, times the um, times this uh, surface or the outward the outward normal at that point in the thing. So uh, another way to do that is you say I've got this uh, I've got this region that bounds this thing. I take the cross product with respect to v, and then I m multiply that by the normal um, direction at the same point that I'm evaluating the um, curl, and then I, uh, you know, have my differential el element on the a, or uh, for the area, my area el element. So that's what I'm going to use. I want to use Stokes' theorem to do this. All right. So let me see. What am I given? So I'm given that force, and I'm given the path, which is um, minus a over two comma zero to uh, a over two comma zero to, uh, I guess this is technically three dimensions. So a lot of times you can, Pretend that two dimensions, is, two dimensions is three dimensions, and just sort of ignore bits and pieces of it. Uh, actually, that's very useful. So, I mean, if anytime you're using something like the curl or the cross product, you can you can do that. Is you can just sort of pretend that you're in um, three dimensions when you're when you've only got two dimensional things, because you know you really are in that um, in that sort of system. Uh, you cannot, however. Uh, keep on doing that, right? You can't do that for uh, go going into higher dimensions or anything like that. And sort of the issue there is going to be that what this uh, cross product does is it doesn't just give you a, it doesn't give you the same number of vector, or same number of components as your original vector, all right? So for three dimensions, it does, right? The cross product will give you, will take two three vectors and turn them into a three vector, right? Um, but a, uh, but in two dimensions, the cross product, product will take two two vectors and turn them into a scalar, or a one vector, or a one by vector, I guess you might say. And in four dimensions, it'll take two four vectors and turn them into one six vector, right? Or one six by vector, or whatever you want to call it. I, I'm, I'm not particularly sure what, the, what they call things like that, because uh, nobody I know actually uses those things. So um, it's a lot of fun thinking about why uh, you, you go from four, four dimensions to six dimensions. Um, but it's not going to be relevant for anything in this class. However, you might want to pick up something on differential forms or something like that, because, you know, the more you expand your brain outside of class, the easier classes become. So I'm just going to say this was the force given up there, right? E. All right, now I want to find the work. And I'm going to do it through uh, Stokes' theorem, I guess it's called. And this isn't very difficult. So one, I want to find that cross product, right? Because I've written it down here. I already know what this vector is. That vector is f. So we have del cross f is equal to all this fun stuff. Everybody loves writing this out in full. I know y, x d d x, y d d y, and z d z d z d z. Uh, it's a wonderful tongue twister, the curl. Um, let's see, then we have f naught prime minus y x hat plus a one minus y over b squared y. Yay, okay. So, um, let's see, how does this work? So we have x, so that's going to be ddy um, times zero, because z is zero minus, uh, well we had z on the second thing, so z is now the um, this guy times the y component, which is a 1 minus y over b squared times f naught prime. Um, you may figure out what that is just by looking at it. I hope you do. Um, then we can add in the y component 
Okay, so x then y then z, y then z. Uh, ddz of f naught prime times minus y um, minus ddx of whatever z is, which is zero. Uh, then we have to add in a little bit more for the z hat component, and that is going to be z then x ddx of minus y or of minus, okay, so the x component, ddx, and the y component, which is f naught prime times a times 1 minus yb squared, which is perfectly fine. Then we minus, subtract ddy of, um, what would we call this thing, uh, minus y times f naught prime. All right, so, the derivative of zero is zero. The um, derivative of something, the z derivative of something with no z dependence is zero. Uh, the derivative of something with no z dependence is zero. The derivative with respect to x of zero is zero. The derivative of something with no, without any x dependence is zero. The derivative of that is uh, minus f naught prime minus that. So that's going to be equal to um, f naught prime times z hat. All right. So that's our cross product. Now that you've seen the cross product, now we can take the integral. Integrals are amazing. You love integrals, I know. That integral is going to give us the work, and we said that you know, if we had this f dot ds, that's equal to uh, the double integral of over r of the del cross f dot the um, normal direction, which is going to be z, right? It's going to be perpendicular to this this guy here. Right-hand rule says z, z is coming up out at you. Oh, can you see my th thumb? There's my thumb. All right. Coming up at you. And, um, and so that's positive z. And so then we say uh, d uh, a, right? All right. Then what we have is just some sort of integral from minus a over 2 to a over 2 from 0 to b of um, f naught prime in the z hat direction dot the z hat direction and dx or dy dx and so that's just 1 z dot z is 1 so we have f naught prime coming out uh, the integral, f the integral for x is a, and the integral for y is b, and that is exactly the same thing we got from everything else. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, you might want to play around with this because what you'll find is if you play around with um, this form here, uh, Soak's theorem in this particular s system looks an awful lot like Green's theorem, right? Um, so the z component is all that's left, right? And then you have this thing, which was just q, and this thing, which was p, and now it's exactly Green's theorem, right? If you put it all together and write it, write it down if you don't see it, and then check in your book, and it'll be exactly the same thing. And you'll, be, you'll say, wow, isn't that awesome? That is awesome. That's amazing, right? Because it's amazing, right? Because, you know, Stokes and Green, I don't even know if they knew each other. They may, they, they may have, I don't know. You know, I haven't read biographies of either one of them. I think one was a baker, and one was some rich guy. One was in London, one was in Ireland. So, you know, they could never have talked. They, they might have been best buddies, but they might never have talked. All right. Anyways, you have a grand old time, and I will talk to you later. Bye.